Hello everyone, I'm Butch Stearns and welcome to the latest episode of The Customer Edge, sponsored by SAP. Uh, we're excited about this show, we're always excited about the Customer Edge series in general, but this particular show, we have a lot to talk about with you and we want to get right to it. This show is a live monthly webisode, live. So we're bringing it to you live. If you're watching this live, you could be watching this on demand. Uh, but what we do is we focus on the latest and most relevant trends, tools, technologies, and thinking around the customer experience and helping you give your customers the edge. The topic for today's show, the latest customer engagement technologies and who should be responsible for buying and implementing them within your organization or within your customers' organizations. That is the topic and focus of this show, and we'll dive right into it in just a second. A couple reminders for you about this show. First of all, it's live, so we want your involvement. And the way you can get involved is on Twitter. Just follow the hashtag, hashtag Customer Edge. The conversations are going on now. They'll be going on there. You can send a question into us. If you send a question, we may read it on the air. We may get to it before the show's over with our panel of experts and my co-hosts. Uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. Another reminder, besides the involvement that you can have in the show, is that this show, The Customer Edge, is tied to an entire community. As a matter of fact, if you're new to the show and you've registered, you're a member of the community now, thecustomeredgetv.com. What is the community? We strive in this community to help you re-examine the customer experience that you provide to your customers. And we do that with social engagement and collaboration from you in this community based partly through this show. Our goal, very simply, is to keep you informed, educated, and maybe even inspired when it comes to re-examining that customer experience that you're providing or that your clients, you're helping them provide. So be a part of this community, CustomerEdgeTV.com and be a part of this show today. Now, to get into the latest customer engagement technologies and who should be responsible for buying and implementing them, let me introduce my co-hosts here. To my far left is Johan Reed from SAP, and Michael Kriegsman is right here. Hello, gentlemen, how are you? Great, Great. how are you? Good, yeah, Good to have you here. It's good to see you. Um, let's start with you, Johan. Um, as with SAP, talk about your background, talk about uh, your role within the organization and why you're so passionate when it comes sure. to this. Yeah, so I've been I've been in the CRM world, you know, dealing with uh, everything from implementation all the way through to to helping companies select CRM uh, technologies since 1999. And uh, today I'm a senior director in our product marketing organization. Uh, so I get to talk about this all day long. I get to share stories of, our, of what our customers are doing and how they're engaging their customers and, and inspire others to, to do a better job of engaging their customers because ultimately I'm a customer and I want to be engaged. So I get to, I get to help companies do that. And Michael, among other things, you're going to be here today specifically to give us primarily, and not exclusively, primarily the CIO perspective. And this is something that you live where we've done other things before here at the Pulse Network, you've done other things with SAP, but for people that don't know you, you're quite honestly an internationally recognized analyst and authority on CIO innovation. You write and speak about this passionately all over the world. Uh, you also have um, your own weekly web series called CXO Talk. Talk about yourself a little bit. You know, I think uh, I, I spend time with some of the most innovative CIOs in the world. And to hear their stories and to figure out, you know, what can CIO, CMO do to have a dramatic impact on their organization is a very, it's, it's a fundamentally important topic. My website, uh, CXO Talk, you know, take a look at some of these people that we speak with. And they're inspiring stories. It's very important. Awesome. Um, so let's talk about what's coming up in this show on the Customer Edge. Again, thanks for being a part of it. Thanks for being here for the live webisode here on Thursday, December 12th. If you're watching this on demand, check around the community. You can see previous shows. You can see thought leaders, articles that they're recommending. You can follow the social channels on the side and see what's going on at CustomerEdgeTV.com. Coming up in the show, Michael is going to be a co-host with us, with Johan and myself, for the entire show, as we talked about. We're also going to get the CMO's perspective on um, our subject today as we sit down with Accenture Interactive's
Managing Director Nan Nayak. Now, Nan's going to join us. She's the global lead for customer experience and social practice with Accenture Interactive. She's a world-renowned thought leader on the subject. Uh, she'll discuss recent Accenture research on the disconnect forming between the CIO and CMO, and she also gives us her five imperatives on improving marketing and IT performance. And then, as a case study, if you will, we would take a closer look at Semex's model for customer engagement technology ownership with their vice president of customer experience, Ven Botha. Ven tells us the successes and challenges that Semex has had in scaling their customer experience in a digital world. All right, I think we've done a good job of setting this up now, right? So let's get into the meat of the show. Customer engagement technologies. Let's start there and let's start with you, Johan. Quite honestly, what are we talking about? What are customer engagement technologies? What should our audience focus on when we say that subject? Yeah, so customer engagement technology, it, you know, part of it is absolutely you know, digital engagement technology, which is what a lot of people think about when they think about you know, how do they engage with customers. Right? So online, uh, the, the experience where the customer is actually interacting with the brand but it goes beyond that. It, it goes into the call center, it goes into face-to-face -face interactions that salespeople might have, and the technology there isn't what the customer interacts with, it's what the employee interacts with. So it's the, the call center software, it's the Salesforce uh, automation software. So it, it's really any of the technologies that a company uses to either engage directly with their customer or empower the people in marketing and sales and in customer service to engage as individuals with the customer. So Michael, talk to me for a second about customer engagement technologies and what resonates with what Johan just said to you. You know, today's consumers expect, expect uh, software to be easy to use and they expect interactions with the, uh, the companies from whom they buy, from which they buy, to be simple and smooth. So for example, and responsive. So for example, I, if I have a problem with my cable, I don't want to call up Comcast and spend 20 minutes on hold and then talk to a, a rep who knows maybe less about the cable system than right. I do. Right. <laughs> I just want to send a tweet to Comcast Cares and I want them to respond back and fix my problem. So when Johan is, is talking about the, the overall engagement and the experience, it requires a technology backbone, but in addition, it requires setting up processes. So it's technology, and it's, but, it's, but it's technology plus more. Right, it's a way to do business using those technologies to help you do business. All right, let's dive into some trends to start off the show. And for that, we go to an article in Forbes magazine written by David Cooperstein. And in this article, I found it very interesting. It's titled, Three Quotes That Define the CMO CIO relationship. Um, and we're going to read those three quotes and get your reactions uh, here on the customer edge and talk about that. Now, uh, to be honest, this was research that was done by Forrester at the end of 2013 here in, in Q4. They got 100 executives together, 50 CMOs and 50 CIOs, your people, Michael. They got them in a room together. <laughs> That's uh, scary. Yeah, and they, they, they kept the gloves off, I guess. Uh, from global corporations to have some frank discussions about their roles, how they relate to their peers in the room. And uh, Forbes published this research, and again, it's David Cooperstein who put this together. So let me read the three quotes. Um, and as David presents it, he says there were three moments of truth that came out of this research, and he summarizes them. So let's comment on each of them. Let's start with Andy Karabutsis, the CIO of Dell, whose quote is, we move at the speed of the customer. And well, let me start with you, Michael, because Andy was actually a guest on your show, CXO Talk, wasn't Yeah, it? she was a guest just a few weeks ago, and uh, she's an amazing woman. You know, when we talk about business moving at the speed of the customer, what that really means is being responsive. As, as I was saying before, I don't want to spend 20 minutes on hold. I want my problem resolved now. And it's up to IT to help put that infrastructure in place so that the marketing organization and customer care organization and others that interact with the customer can be responsive. Right. 
So, Johan, when we're talking about the speed of the customer, isn't it driven from the customer end in, in a world now where they have all the power? They want it where they want, when they want, how they want, real time. I mean, they, we demand, the cable example, we demand responses right away. If we don't get it, we're going somewhere else. Yeah, I, I, what's interesting about this is, you know, the customer manages the relationship. You know, we, we have this, the, this somewhat antiquated term called CRM. And really, it's, you know, it's, it's foolish to think that a business can manage the relationship with the customer in today's world, right? The customer's in charge. They're managing the relationship with us as a business. And, and we have to be responsive to that. And it's really interesting because I think, you know, when you talk about IT, right, the customer, when, when someone in IT talks about the customer, usually they're talking about another department. They're talking about maybe marketing as the customer, or sales as the customer, or accounting as the customer, or human resources as the customer. Well, being responsive as a business to move at the speed of the customer requires that everybody agree that there is one customer, and that customer is the customer, external. And IT has to, has to adapt to serve that customer. And I think the business can be the guide to that. But I think you know, maybe Michael has a, has a point of view on that. Well, I think for IT, there's something of a challenge. Because if, you, if, if we think about traditional IT, it was all about infrastructure. Infrastructure and storage and data centers and computers. And now we're saying to IT, hey, yeah, all of that stuff, security is important. But now you've got to have the mindset of supporting the external customer. Well, use the term mindset. To me, it's customer-centric. We hear that term all the time. <clears throat> but if you start there, if you start by thinking about the customer, then part part of IT's role is having to adapt with that me methodology and that priority to start there because the technologies have to support that the customer is in charge, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and I think it's a difficult shift. And, and so when Shift's we a good word. Shift is a good word. Yeah, it's it's a difficult change, and it requires IT to adopt a, a, a different type of mindset, a different type of mentality that is both innovative and and ultimately disruptive. But disruption for IT is is a challenge because IT is all about stability. Well, we'll get to disruption in just a second. That's our third trend. Let's go to our <laughs> second one, which comes out of. Uh, Again, this article in Forbes magazine by David Cooperstein, three quotes from Forrester Research of 100 executives in a room, CMOs and CIOs equally. Second quote comes from Brian Wong, the CEO of KIPP. I'll start with you, Johan, with this one. None of you will go into the history books from making your quarter. I would add on to that, though, dot, 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 but some of you might be fired for not making your quarter, right? Isn't that the ultimate yeah. challenge? Yeah, well, and you know, the reality is that it's sort of the 90-day career plan for, for so many people. But, you know, to bring that to, to customer engagement, right, the customer isn't going to wait 90 days. And, and while, while a lot of the business is focused on generating revenue in the next 90 days, right, the, the, the organization has to move faster to be able to roll those technologies out to be able to, to take advantage of the, the customer's need now, right? To help do that in 90 days to make the number. But at the same time, you know, they have to be looking ahead. They have to be thinking longer term. And, and I think in the end, the, the leaders who can think longer term, who have that vision, who are, are focused on engaging the customer, they're the ones who are going to make the difference. And, and the ones who are focused internally on how do I make the number quarter after quarter, you know, they'll do okay. But I don't think they're going to be the difference makers in the industry. Well, the real, the, the real challenge here is business expects its leaders to make those quarterly numbers. And there's this constant pressure to do so. So how then can a CIO or a CMO innovate and make change, and yet at the still at, at the same time still meet those shorter term expectations. This is the fundamental tension, yeah. or one of the fundamental tensions. I completely agree, and I think you know I think that's where you know Wall Street versus the customer is a is a little bit of a of a, a disconnect, right? Because the you know to, to your point, Wall Street is driving that pressure to make the number quarter after quarter after quarter, where you know it takes a lot more forethought. Uh, and investing ahead of the curve to be ready to engage the customer in new technologies. You know, we're, we recently did a, a segment on wearable tech, right? If companies aren't thinking ahead of the curve, if they're focused on the next 90 days, they're not thinking about how wearable technology is going to touch their customers and how that's going to enable them. So they need to invest ahead of the curve, which, you know, again, it, it, 
it's this balance of thinking ahead and trying to plan it out versus focusing on how do I get the most from my customer today. Well, a quick tease about that. Again, you're watching the Custom Reg. This is a live monthly webisode, but it's part of the community, customregtv.com. Search around there. You can find Johan's discussion that we had about wearable technology. And as we both know from when it comes to a business perspective, wearable technology is not all about what it can do and the coolness of the gadget. It's about how to do business today. And if you're not there now or thinking about it, you're going to be behind. That, that was the whole gist yeah. to give a tease to what we talked about. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And that and you know, goes right back to the 90-day career plan. If you're not, you need to think beyond 90 days to, to be able to engage your customers. So as I get to the third quote, which is going to come from Steve Garrity, a CTO from Hearsay Social, let me recap for a second, because the first quote we had from Andy Karabutsis, who was on your show, CXO Talk, who was a CIO from Dell and a woman. The second quote we had was from Brian Wong, the CEO of KIPP. I met Brian at CES a couple years ago. He's the ripe old age of 21 right now, by the way. So he's in a room with these 100 executives and saying, quote, none of you will go into the history books for making your quarter. <laughs> oh, really, Brian? You're 21 years old, you know, but he's making waves by understanding how business is done. The third one is a CTO's perspective. Steve Garrity from Hearsay Social, and it's the point you brought up before, that term we all hear now, disruption. And his quote is, disruption is more powerful than innovation. What does he mean literally by this, Michael? Innovation has a shorter term flavor to it. Whereas when we think of disruption, it really means how are we going to transform important ways, uh, more fundamental ways that the organization does business. The, the difficulty is disruption sounds, sounds nice, right, and transformation, but nobody wants to have their job disrupted. Right? We're all trying to do whatever, whatever, whatever it is that we do. So, so the balance then becomes how do you introduce this type of uh, more uh, basic change into an organization and still keep that organization functioning, able to you know, deliver its products, services, and get the phones answered on time and so well, forth. That's what we're talking about on the show, Johan. So I'll put it right to you. To his point, innovation is incremental. Disruption is fundamental. So if we embrace that and we think about it, speak to our audience, because if I'm a CMO and I'm a CIO and I'm debating or thinking about this subject of today's show, who's responsible yeah. for implementing customer engagement technologies and buying them? Oh, oh, now we're talking about my budget too? And now you want me to be disruptive? That's a scary word for me. Well, it's a fundamental change <laughs> in my business? You don't get a choice. That's the problem is, you know, in this case, the customer is driving the agenda, Butch. Yeah. And, you know, frankly, they're doing the disrupting. It's up to the company to keep pace with that disruption. I think that's part of what makes this difficult. It's, it's hard for companies to, you know, the, the pace of change in, in consumer tech in general is, is scaling. I mean, it, it kind of goes to Moore's Law, right? It, it keeps doubling and, and, and doubling and doubling. And, and so companies are, are trying to rationalize. How do I get these, these new technologies? How do I change my business process? How do I change my whole model uh, around this evolving customer? And, and so, you know, at the end of the day, the company doesn't get to choose whether they're going to adopt a disruptive technology or, or take those steps. I think the customers are choosing for them and forcing this disruption into their business model. So we've set the tone pretty well, I think. We've used that article to set three trends in the industry. One quick comment from both of you before we go to Nan Nyack. We're going to hear from her in a second to get the CMO's perspective. But again, right back to the beginning and the subject we're talking about here today, customer engagement technologies and who's responsible <clears throat> for buying and implementing them within an organization. Give me a short answer to that question. And I'll ask you the question at the end of the show to see if it's changed a little bit. Go ahead, Michael. The CIO and the business, which in this case is most likely going to be marketing, have to work very closely together. Without, uh, the, they're, it, it's two wings of a bird. With one, without both, that bird is not going to fly. Oftentimes, sorry to interrupt, but two separate budgets, though, too. Isn't that part of the challenge? And so this requires an organizational shift. And this is part of the mindset change that must exist and must underlie the overall driver to making these changes, to getting different parts of the organization to work closely together. It's one of the reasons that it's hard. You know, I think uh, 
so to try to put as fine a point on it as I can, I think you know the CIO has to be responsible for the technology because at the end of the day, and I keep saying that, there's a lot of days that are ending here. I think the marketing organization, marketing ops, sales ops, they don't have technologists on staff who deeply understand security concepts, who can you know, really integrate the systems. Because let's face it, the CIO owns a lot of customer data. Right? The problem is the CIO doesn't really have that deep business process understanding because you know, half of their job is about making sure that everybody has a laptop and that the network is running. So they can't possibly know everything there is to know about marketing, about sales, about customer service, how the call center works, the e-commerce piece. They can't know all of that. And so the imperative is for the business owners to really engage IT and, and to form a partnership where they bring the understanding of the business problem and they understand what they need and they can clearly articulate that and IT needs to step up and, and accept the fact that they need to be much more responsive and, 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 and keep pace with the customer's demands uh, and work with the business to deliver that. Can I give you my analogy on this? To me, I grew up as a sports guy, so forgive me, but this is the CMO and CIO is like a pitcher-catcher relationship. I look at the CMO as the one and the department that has to, marketing has to deliver the pitch. The catcher might call the pitch. The, t the CIO might call which technology we're using. They have to know where it's going. They have to advise them. They have to work with them to let them know this batter might hit this if you hit that. But ultimately, the CMO is the one who's throwing the pitch. So they're the one. Does, does that make any sense? Yeah, but, but you know, doing it? With, with baseball, the pitcher and the catcher are on the same well, isn't that what you're both saying? Yes. Because they're both responsible for it. If the manager comes back to the catcher and says, what the hell did you call that pitch for? The problem is you don't, have, you don't have office politics on the baseball diamond. That's, we don't have time. That's, that's the difference. <laughs> they, they don't have entirely different fields. You know, They're on the same baseball diamond. In some organizations, it seems that the CIO and the CMO are just entirely in different stadiums. But to take this li analogy literally, they need to be on the same page. Yeah. And by the way, the batter is the customer because it's, they're not going against you. They're with you. you. You need to get them on your side. You need to give them a meatball that they can hit out of the park. Uh, right? As <laughs> Johan said earlier, the customer is ultimately driving this. When competitors come out, so again, to use the example of, uh, of support over Twitter, if your competitors are responsive over Twitter to customer service and you're not, well, that's a, that's a mark for them. That's a mark for your customer. We are on the customer. I'm sorry, Michael, did I interrupt you? No, Go ahead, no, finish no. That. Uh, Michael Kriegsman is here. Johan Reed is here from SAP. We're talking on the Customer Edge, a live monthly webisode. We encourage you to be part of the community at CustomerEdgeTV.com. Time now in this discussion about who should be responsible for customer engagement technologies, buying them and implementing within your organization to hear the CMO's perspective. And for that, we turn to Nan Nayak from Accenture Interactive. She is managing director and she's also global lead for customer experience and social practice at Accenture Interactive. Here's Nan Nayak. So we're discussing new customer experience technologies and who should be responsible for buying and implementing those technologies. And in this discussion, it's time now to talk about how the business side needs to work with IT. And to talk about that specific point, let's get a CMO's perspective. And to do that, we bring in Nan Nayak from Accenture Interactive. Hello, Nan. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you today, Butch? I'm excellent. Uh, you are the Managing Director with Accenture Interactive and Global Lead for Customer Experience and Social Practice. Uh, it's a long title, but what is your role with Accenture Interactive? What do you focus on? Yeah, within Accenture Interactive, which is a division of Accenture that focuses on helping clients with their digital uh, investments, I focus on the customer experience and social media layer. I help clients uh, get the most out of their investments in what we call paid media, owned media, and earned media, and make sure that whatever they're investing experiences they're creating across these spaces uh, actually tie to business outcomes. So Nan, let's start with some of those transformations. What's the one big change that CMOs and CIOs are going through that they have to work together here? 
Yeah, I think the one big change is the consumerization of everything, right? So with digital entering the picture, consumers have so much choice and so many channels to engage with mm -hmm. that relevance becomes the key principle through which you have to drive uh, business outcomes. So if you're not relevant to consumers, wherever they touch a brand, then your return on investment on, on what you're trying to do with them of the, on these touch points is lost. So if brands do not realize that being product centric or trying to push a product or service at customer, customers is not going to work anymore, you have to figure out how to insert yourself contextually into whatever they are seeking. And that specific uh, change results in focus on what we call personalization, uh, intent marketing, and making sure that you know you are very tuned in to what consumers are seeking at specific points in time. Nan, let's talk a little bit about measurement and performance now. Big data analytics is always out there, but when it comes to marketing, what's the importance for marketers with big data analytics? Yeah, so as we talk about relevance, in order to be relevant at every touch point, you really have to understand who this customer is, where they've been before, what they've bought before, where they live. A lot of contextual data is important. And as that contextual data uh, becomes increasingly important, you need to be able to assemble that and also assemble it in a way that's not just touch point specific, not knowing just at what they did at the store or what they did uh, online, but how all of that connects together. So measurement become very important and instrumentation to making sure you're listening for all of the important insights across these touch points becomes foundational to success in the space. So Nan, to follow up on that, in order to drive relevance, how are technology decisions within a company affected? Yeah, so you know, in the past, when you look at how IT made decisions and how they brought technology platforms uh, to uh, you know alive, it was really sort of almost quite independent of um, you know real time business requirements for, for from a customer perspective. So you you selected a content management system or an e commerce system based on its inherent um, you know characteristics. However, these days with smaller pieces of technology in service oriented um, uh, models or cloud based models, you, you don't really uh, have the luxury of going out and buying a big system. You need to be able to integrate smaller point solutions very quickly, iterate on them, figure out whether they're driving business value. And then if not, you want to be able to unplug them and and, and work on something else. So the fundamental change, I believe, in, in technology decision-making is that business is taking more of an interest in finding and, and playing with these solutions and expecting IT to help them integrate them quickly, uh, test market quickly, and, and uh, you know, change them out as required. So fundamentally, what, what's happening is the business side is taking a lot more interest in technology, especially service-based technology that enables their business outcomes and expecting IT to quickly integrate it rather than wait for uh, IT to make all the technology decisions. This changes sort of the balance in terms of technology decision-making where it needs to be become more of a collaborative process. We are talking about new customer experience technologies and who should be responsible for buying and implementing them. We're getting a CMO's perspective. We're talking with Nan Nayak, Managing Director with Accenture Interactive and Global Lead for Customer Experience and Social Practice. Nan, as relevance is king, as you've been talking about, talk a little bit more now about the push versus pull mentality. For marketers now, you know, the old days it used to be that campaigns would push a message. You're now pulling the customers in, aren't you? Well, I think, we're, I think we're trying to get clients to take this uh, different mentality because in the past, uh, brands were in control of the messages about what people thought about them. You know, so you would created campaigns around new products. You had um, Mad Men, if you will, create very, uh, very compelling, um, you know, very controlled uh, sort of messaging around products and services, which, uh, which uh, Still, still is important. But what's what's beginning to happen is that that push mentality, without really taking into consideration the consumer's context and whether they're willing to receive that message in that way, has has changed the changed the way uh, value propositions need to be delivered. So what you want is really 
uh, to figure out what is the right time and moment in the co ongoing conversation that consumers are having in the digital system that a brand needs to insert itself. And that's why social media becomes important, uh, making sure that you are taking your offer or your product and inserting that in a contextually relevant way uh, so that consumers will engage. So make, becoming more uh, more pull, pulling customers into the product conversation. So this push versus pull actually puts a lot of onus on technology. First, on the data side, because you need to understand the context of specific con consumer segments. And second, because you now need to have a varied uh, set of experiences based on each segment's way of receiving those, those messages. So once again, that changes the balance in terms of moving from one size fits all to uh, millions of experiences that you may have to render with small variations and doing that in real time puts a different level of um, pressure, I believe, on content, commerce, uh, campaign management, and analytic systems. And for CMOs and for marketers today, this really starts with a different mentality, doesn't it? A different thought process, one that's centered around the customer, doesn't it? Yes, and centering around the customer is more than just, you know, what I'd like to say is it's not just about centering around a customer like an average customer. It's really managing experiences on an ongoing basis and keeping up with customers as they change, as they get new information about competitive products or they, are they change in their lifestyle or they change in terms of who they, where they are in, in terms of uh, uh, events that are happening in their own lives. So it does take a different perspective from a marketer's perspective um, to really uh, begin to immerse themselves on the customer side. And not just enough to immerse themselves, they also have to change their operating models to be customer driven and not being trying to figure out to be still product driven and trying to force fit into a customer environment. And with this shift in power to the customers that we're all living through right now, with this reality, uh, companies are shifting their strategy, aren't they? And new roles are emerging, aren't they? Yeah, you know, a new role is emerging. And I think earlier, you know, you had typical enterprises organizing themselves around uh, cutting the customer journey, if you will, into pieces. You know, you had the marketing department, you had the service department, you had the sales department, you may have the e-commerce department. And this essentially, you know, uh, you know, is, is uh, you know, divide and conquer type of approach. But this doesn't work anymore because customers are moving across this journey and what we, we at Accenture like to call the nonstop experience, that you are marketing, selling, supporting, um, you know, uh, engaging all at the same time. And so we expect that a new role called the, the new CEO, if you will, the new chief experience officer role will emerge in order to help brands begin to, begin to orchestrate experiences across the variety of touch points using data and technology to power that. And this chief experience officer will probably be heavily digitally driven and enable not only current experiences uh, based on current products and services, but enable new ways that a brand can take to market. For example, you know, uh, uh, BMW or Mercedes will not say they're just car companies anymore. They're trying to engage in people's lives in, as they are being transported from one place to the other, which is saying it differently, right? So that creates new opportunities new business models, and new engagements with their customers. So Nan, to wrap this discussion all up, to answer the question directly that we've been asking in the discussion about you know, new customer experience technologies and who should be responsible for buying and implementing, you seem to be saying from a CMO's perspective that the CMO and CIO need to work together, obviously, to make these decisions, that the business side needs to drive this with IT, correct? Is that a good summation? Yeah, I think the business side needs to drive it with IT. And I think they need to actually be very, the, the lines between them need to soften and really uh, cross talent, that, you know, technology talent needs to be on both business side and business talent on the technology side. They need to work jointly together to figure out what technologies, analytics, uh, and business processes need to be brought to market in order to uh, you know, really take advantage of new opportunities in creating this customer-centric organization. Well, this is something you obviously care very deeply about. You live it every day, Nan. If people want to get a hold of you, how do you prefer that they reach out to you? 
Yeah, I'm part of Accenture, and so um, my email address or LinkedIn is a way uh, to get uh, access to me. You can send me an email at nantani.p.nayak at Accenture.com or find me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect you with the right Accenture Interactive resources to help you think through this. She is Nan Nayak, Managing Director with Accenture Interactive and Global Lead for Customer Experience and Social Practice. Nan, thanks for your time. Thank you. And thanks to Nan Nayak for joining us from Accenture Interactive. We'll hear from her later in the show with her five imperatives on bridging the trust gap between CMOs and CIOs. Time now to take a closer look um, at one particular case study when it comes to customer engagement technologies and how it worked in with their customer engagement strategy. And for that, we bring in uh, Van Bontha, who is the Vice President of Customer Experience with Semex Corporation. Van, how are you? Good, how are you doing, Butch? Excellent, thanks for being a part of this show and a part of this discussion. Uh, talk about Semex, you guys are a global leader in uh, the building construction industry. Talk about what your company does and your role within the organization. Sure, uh, we are uh, a global uh, building materials company, uh, obviously spread out in about 50 countries. Uh, I am uh, primarily in charge of uh, the customer experience for the Semex US operations. And uh, we are obviously spread up, spread across the nation uh, in the Sun Belt areas, around in about 30 states. So when we talk about your customer engagement strategy or your customer experience strategy, talk about your customers a little bit. Paint a picture from the types of customers that you have, Ven. Sure. We uh, primarily, uh, our customer base uh, varies quite, uh, quite large. It's uh, in the sense, uh, obviously, we are um, a business-to-business -business, uh, entity here in the United States. So we, on one end of the spectrum, we have uh, your uh, large customers, which uh, they're typically building, uh, you know, major uh, sky, rise, sky rises or. Uh, uh, the freeways, et cetera, as well as uh, on the other end, we have uh, the smaller customers where, uh, you know, somebody doing your driveway or building your swimming pool. So, so our customers vary from one end to the other. So when it comes to your customer experience strategy, um, brag about it a little bit. You're the vice president of customer experience. Where did you begin? What are you proud about that you've accomplished with it? What is your strategy? What is your philosophy? What is your mission when it comes to it? Sure. The, uh, I think 10 years ago, we, we started up uh, on this path. Uh, you know, the, the goal was very, very clear. Uh, the strategy was, you know, we are in a in a in an industry that is uh, you know technologically we are not in the you know pretty advanced. Uh, we have a commodity product. How do you differentiate yourself was the key thing. Uh, so how do you decommoditize our product? How do we how do we provide value to our customers? So that was the differentiating factor is how can we provide services that will differentiate us from our competition. So to that end. Um, for about 10 years, uh, what we have been doing is trying to collapse the, the several uh, point of contact for our customers to, to a single point of contact so we can better understand the customer, what their needs are, what they're looking for, and better serve them. So what I think is very interesting, he just said there, when it comes to his strategy, that I'd like you guys to comment before you get into a conversation with Ven, is providing value and service to our customers by collapsing the points of contact. I mean, it really sounds like something simple to do and an actionable thing that people can think about in their strategy. Totally, yeah, I mean, and, and it, you know, who doesn't want to have fewer, fewer numbers to call, right? The, I think every customer wants to have one person to call if they have a question, if they have a problem, if they have an issue with a bill, if they don't get the good that they ordered. You know, they, they don't want to have different phone numbers and different points of contact for, 
for uh, for every different issue. Uh, and you know, to that to that point, Ven, I think one question that I'm very interested in is. You know, you, you, you characterize the difference in your customer base. You said, you know, on one end, you have the guys who are out there building, building the freeway, uh, and, then, and then you have the guy who's coming to my house to pour, pour a concrete slab. Those are completely different ends of the spectrum. How do, you, how do you break up your customer base, and how do you treat them differently at, at the different ends? That's a great question. Um, and that's where we, uh, the segmentation plays uh, a critical role. So if you look at our customer base, right? I mean, we probably have uh, about 60, 70% of our revenue comes from about you know 20% of our customer base. That's large volume. That's, uh, that's really the, the big customers that uh, that are more complex. So what we have what we have done is that in order to uh, engage them, so we are providing a lot of the tools for our sales force that actually deal with these large accounts. On the other end, uh, where we have actually, you know, the 80% of the customers that contribute, you know, 30% of our revenues, what we have done is, uh, by segmentation, we are actually creating uh, different interaction channels for these customer base to reach us. Remember, these are like in the thousands and thousands of customers, and they're spread across the country. And in order to uh, engage them, you know, face-to-face -face for a salesperson, it's quite impossible. So we have uh, gone down this strategy for the last three years to, to develop the, the segmentation as well as a, an interaction channel to go engage these customers so that we are all able to serve their needs uh, for all the, the, the small customers. Actually, there are multiple, you know, in the numbers wise, there are many, many of them. So, and obviously with technology, which is the key thing for us, we're able to engage them I should say we are we're working on it still. We are about three years into it, and uh, and and technology plays a major major role in that one. Van, this is Michael. Uh, I'm an analyst, and and I spend quite a bit of time with both uh, CIOs and CMOs. And the thing that's striking to me is we're talking about cement. We're talking about a commodity, and you're differentiating the entire company on the basis of this customer experience strategy. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, what, what, it, what happens is like um, in, the, in, the serve, in, the, in our industry, especially when you're talking about segmentation, especially for cement, right? I mean, even though the, our, our, uh, our customers are mostly business to business, so the, the consumer really does not uh, really play a role into that, but Imagine the you're you're pouring freeways, right, or building skyscrapers. The on-time delivery for for our products is very very critical. Uh, so if you're not there on time and, and you don't have a continuous uh, uh, flow of product, it is actually going to create major issues, especially if you're pouring bridges. Uh, and actually, we create uh, what do you call it, as a cold joint where we we. Um, you know, when the products don't set properly, if there's a gap in when you're pouring the, the product. So for us to provide uh, the, that kind of a, uh, a service is very, very critical. So that will actually open up all our supply chain. So we had to create uh, total visibility into the whole supply chain, you know, using, again, technology. So, and that, that is very, very critical for our customers to get our product on time. Johan, it really seems to me like they are bridging this gap between technology and marketing, between tech, the CIO and lines of business. Yeah, it, it definitely it definitely seems that uh, you know the success that Semex is having is related to closing that gap, and 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 that actually brings me to the question I wanted to ask Ven, which is kind of the point blank question. So you talked about the different engagement technologies that that you're using with the different segments of customer. Who owns those? Who's responsible? Is it, does does that come out of the IT budget? Is that something that that comes right out of the CMO's budget? Uh, is it shared? Do, how does that work at Semex? Could you could you share with us? Sure, that's a great question. Um, actually, to Michael's point as well, uh, I mean, we what we have what we have seen or what I have seen is uh, especially you know we are we're actually doing this on a daily basis. I see a convergence of the, the roles happening, right? So the in order in order for us to keep all this separated uh, between the CMO and and the customer experience and the CIO, it's it's it becomes very difficult because 
all our needs are converging in to, uh, to one point now. So our strategy has been the, the customer engagement tools are owned by IT, and uh, they are the ones that have to uh, you know, buy and actually put them in place. But from the business side, what we are defining is, is, is the strategy. So we say, what would be our purpose? You know, okay, our purpose is to engage this, this small customer base uh, with Samex, especially the ones that usually are neglect, get neglected because of their the vast numbers. But if we, if we set the, the purpose and I, and, I, and I can build the infrastructure, for example, with the people and, and the right business processes, IT has to enable that technology for us to, to engage, those, engage that customer base. Van, this is Michael again. Uh, so what have the results been? Tell us about the, uh, the outcomes that you're, that you're experiencing from all of this. It's, um, it's been very good. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it, this is a long journey. Um, I mean, I think it's never ending. So, uh, for example, if you take the, the cement side, um, our delivered volume. So we, we, we have uh, two types of customers. Some, uh, they actually come pick up their, their cement in their own trucks. And then and we have a segment that we deliver our product to those customers. So since we have the program in place, uh, we have seen an increase of uh, the delivered volume, which we control, but 10% a year over year. So, so that is that is that is a good sign, and uh, and as well as our um, our on-time delivery, which at, at first we used to be focused on, you know, are we there on time, uh, and 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 what percentage of the time we are on time. But what, what we found is more like, uh, you know, in order to provide the customer with the right information, because, you know, to getting there anywhere on time is, 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 is uh, you know, there's a lot of constraints that we deal with, you know, plants, traffic, uh, trucks, and et cetera. So with a single point of contact, we are able to be proactive with our customers and keep them engaged as to any, you know, service interruption happening, service failure happening. And that has actually created uh, a better uh, communication between us and the customer by, by establishing this program. We are talking with Ven Bontha, who is the Vice President of Customer Experience for Semex Corporation. You're watching the Customer Edge. Uh, we're talking on this episode, it's a live monthly webisode, uh, about customer engagement technologies and who should be responsible for buying them. Uh, we're talking with Ven specifically about his customer experience strategy that he's implemented and continues to implement with Semex Corporation. Ven, it seems to me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but take us back to when you started this, the successes that you have had or the challenges you might have had, but it seems to me a big part of this was starting with your customers. To Michael's point, we're talking about cement. You might have small customers and large customers, but to a small customer, their need is just as big as a need may be to the large customer. So it really started with a customer-centered strategy, looking at their needs, didn't it? Absolutely. Um, remember, we, when we um, actually in the, in the United States, uh, you know, the company grew through acquisitions. Uh, so there were a lot of acquisitions from uh, 95 onwards to 2007. So we, we actually left um, the front office alone during, the, the, during this acquisition. So, so customer was, was ha you know, having a lot of multiple touch points and, and not really, there was not a standard service. We didn't know exactly what was happening. So when we started the program, when we looked at, uh, in fact, we, we, we did in 2003, 2004, we conducted a voice of customer trying to see what, uh, you know, what the, what the customer uh, expectations are and, and how we perform as well as our competition performs. So one of the things that we found, uh, especially the top uh, three attributes was all about service delivery. You know, they said it, it's, we are not able to provide them, uh, you know, honest information or delivery on time. Uh, so mostly related to the service delivery side. And then then also on the, on the other end, uh, it was about uh, even administrative paperwork. So, for example, they needed, uh, you know, the bill of ladings or the tickets, uh, and the, which used to take us several days to get it back, back to the customer. So we started looking at that and said, you know, let's look at the business processes that we have and the technology that we have to serve them. And we found uh, several gaps. So that's when we said, okay, we need to define a, a better processes and put technology in place so that we can, you know, we're able to serve this customer base. And that's how we started. 
And in the journey on the last uh, several years now, about eight years, we have expanded that program to, to include, obviously, from the large customers to, to now we're, we're able to interact with, the, with our, uh, the other segment of the customers, which are the smaller businesses. I hope I answered your question. Yes, very much so. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I want to take you back, Ven, uh, Ven to is you. You know, I think it's really interesting, Michael. Ven has talked about the supply chain and the delivery process as being an integral part of the customer experience, and I think I think that's something that that our audience really needs to take away from this is it's not only about you know when someone calls into a call center or when they interact with marketing uh, it's also about you know getting the bill of lighting on time it's about reaching into the ERP system it's about reaching into you know making sure that the 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 bill is right that the goods that are that are delivered are correct um, you know, and, and I think that's that's a critical part of this. And I wanted to to ask Ben one other question from an organizational point of view. You know, how does that how does that impact your organization? Are you you know are you working more closely with IT as well as with the uh, you know the supply chain teams to make sure that it's a continuous experience uh, from the very beginning all the way through to the the point where the goods you know the, the cement has been trucked out and and they get they're signing off on the bill. Absolutely, actually, that's uh, that was one of the transformations that uh, the the company has to go through. Like uh, more, um, you know, rather than be a silo based uh, things, like okay, here's our uh, uh, when you look at our um, code to cash processes, we didn't really want to be having all these silos, and we have the logistics group and the sales group, and and you know you have all the all the other departments. So uh, several years ago, we started doing from a functional point of view. You know, how should the flow be from uh, from one from the court uh, onwards to when we apply cash? And uh, once we normalize those processes, you know, obviously IT and enabling the, those processes from the IT perspective was very very critical. So when when we I think there was a there's a point about uh, you know this point solutions right you know software as a solution. We did use them in the beginning to to get uh, a quick hit and to see if you know how we can get these things done uh, quite you know rapidly, and and at some point uh, we ran into you know the 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 obviously there's a there's a point you can't serve uh, with with all these point solutions uh, having so many so many solutions in place, and then. Uh, you know the IT's with IT's role was to create uh, you know obviously the the ERP systems and and try to integrate all these processes into into a place where we have better communication between all these groups. Uh, so we're all looking at one one single point of truth rather, right? Like anybody within the company as well as our customers and the suppliers are now logging into the same systems. Johan, this is really about. Uh, transformation of the business. It's not just incrementally making an innovation on better cement, but we're talking about a very, they, they're, they changed their business. It's a fundamental shift, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, then, if you are, uh, give, us, give us some advice for people who want to follow in your footsteps. I mean, with this type of change and, and transformation, there have got to be bumps in the road from time to time. So get, share your advice, please. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, one of, when we started, uh, I, think, uh, I think Gohan said uh, CRM. I think uh, that was part of my title at, <laughs> 10 years ago. And we immediately figured out that the CRM, you know, like you said, you really can't manage the customers. Uh, through this CRM, so we we changed to customer experience, but one of the critical things was also not only get the buy-in from uh, from within the organization and, and the customer base, but one of the most critical things for us have been the senior management support in the company. So we we really have the their uh, total support uh, as well as you know for uh, not only for. From a budget point of view, or, or you know, from the, the providing the money, the finances, but uh, to be engaged in the process to really uh, uh, help us get there. So that has been very, very, very critical for us. So I would say, in order to to get these things done, the, obviously we need everybody from in the, in the organization to be 
part of this, but uh, it has to be driven by the senior, uh, the, 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 C the CEO and everybody down from there. So then one final question for me to wrap this all up. You are a customer experience, vice president of a customer experience. Nan made the point uh, from a CMO's perspective that these roles are emerging within companies. How many of your clients or customers have CDOs, chief digital officers or CEOs, customer experience officers like yourself that you end up dealing with? Actually, um, the you know this is actually a growing role. Uh, I think uh, obviously there is. I, I've dealt with the many of our customers. Uh, they they truly don't have that role, like in the sense where uh, there is a customer experience group or as such, because this role is being shared between um, you know the, the the different aspects in the company. So. I think it's, it's still new, uh, this is still growing. Uh, so uh, if you really want uh, the, to make, be customer centric, I think to to represent uh, the, the customer within the organization, I think you need to, to, to have this role. So I don't see it as much within our customers, but outside I've seen the, the role uh, beyond our industry, I've seen it growing quite rapidly in the last 10 years, but within our industry, not as much yet. Thank you very much. We are talking with Ven Bontha, who is the uh, Vice President of Customer Experience for Semex. Uh, congratulations on your success, continued success, Ven. Some very valuable nuggets for our audience, and we really appreciate your time and being involved in the uh, Customer Edge today. Thank you very much. All right, Ven Bontha, the Vice President of Customer Experience uh, for Semex Corporation. Time now to talk about recently published Accenture Interactive Research, a study on the CMO-CIO disconnect. That's what this research produced, that yes, there is a disconnect. More than 400 senior marketing executives, 250 senior IT executives across 10 countries were interviewed for this research. The results show CMOs and CIOs are not as connected and as collaborative as they should be. Here, and a trust gap exists between the two of them. So here again is Nan Nayak from Accenture Interactive with five imperatives to help bridge that trust gap. Hi, I'm Nan Nayak from Accenture Interactive, and I'm here to talk to you about five imperatives to close the CIO-CMO trust gap. Imperative number one, identifying the chief marketing officer as the chief experience officer. Today, the role of a chief marketing officer is more than marketing communication. It is really about orchestrating experiences across the customer journey, across touch points in a multi-channel environment. Marketing cannot be just about product-centric communications that are pushed to the market. They need to be about inserting the right messages at the right time across the important channels where high value set of customers are engaging. This requires orchestration of that experience across multiple touch points and bringing in the right enablers like a single view of the customer, flexible models in terms of how to drive content and experiences, the right analytics to understand consumer context, which requires an orchestration of this overall model and therefore the the CMO's role needs to be more of a chief experience officer that has the capability to drive synergies across these touch points. Imperative number two, accepting IT as a strategic partner with marketing, not just as a platform provider. What we found from the research is that IT and marketing are not talking to each other or aligning with each other as they make their own business plans. Both groups should collaborate to understand what systemic changes are required in order for them to successfully take advantage of new technologies and business models that the digital environment is providing. To engineer more relevant and compelling experiences requires contextual data and agile technology to serve up the right experiences at the right time. This requires CIOs to change their orientations from providers of platform services and technology standards to becoming partners with CMOs to bring flexibility, agility, and rapid iteration to take advantage of digital and new uh, cloud-based technologies. 
no longer is technology decision making based on just the technology's value on its own, but really in support of specific consumer experiences. Imperative number three is changing the skill mix. As the lines between technology and business soften, the skill set that exists on the business side, as well as those that exist on the technology side, need to kind of come closer to each other. On the business side, the traditional genius creative madman approach to marketing needs to be augmented by what we call mathmen, well versed in analytics and technology, who can bring the, this approach to the overall marketing mix to create the most relevant contextually uh, powerful experiences. Similarly, on the IT side, more business analysis and agile methods to match the speed of business is required. So bringing business analysts who understand what the business pain points are, are required on the technology side as well. The fourth imperative that came out of the research was the agreement on the business levers for marketing and IT. In a typical uh, IT department, they are held accountable for platform readiness and for making sure that uh, any types of technology adheres to standards like privacy, security, data, and so on. Well, on the business side, it's more about customer acquisition, uh, conversion, engagement, and so on. And often, the, the two different uh, points of view on what they're accountable for get in the way of each other's uh, success. Often, marketing departments will hold IT ac accountable for being slow and too uh, bureaucratic to allow them to do what they need to do in order to get their work done. In this new world, bringing uh, business and IT together in making sure that there is a balance between the focus on standards and the focus on agility is, is, is required. The fourth imperative is really about focusing on both efficiency and sizzle and agility that needs to come forward in order to be successful in this space. The fifth imperative is about trust. This whole piece of research we did was about the trust gap. And CMOs and CIOs need to just do that, trust each other. Without that trust, they cannot take the opportunity for creating multi-channel experiences and driving business outcomes in this digital world. By bringing their measures closer to each other, by bringing their talent to be more similar, by bringing their overall center on customers together, trust will develop. And without this trust, they will not be able to take advantage of the opportunities before them. I'm Nan Nayak. Those were the five imperatives that came out of the Accenture Interactive Research on the CMO-CIO trust gap. Consider them carefully as you look at your digital opportunities. Thank you. Time now for takeaways on this edition of the Customer Edge, where our focus has been and continues to be with takeaways of this show now, the latest customer engagement technologies and who should be responsible for both buying and implementing them within organizations. I'm Butch Stearns of the Pulse Network, alongside is Michael Kriegsman and Johan Reed from SAP. Okay, let's boil this down if we can. Great guests on this show, Nan Nayak from Accenture Interactive, Ven Bontha from Semex, uh, talking about this. First takeaway, it's not about CRM. Talk about that, Michael. Yeah, you know, CRM systems involve taking names of customers, putting them in a database, and really, it's a tool that allows managers to kind of keep tabs on salespeople. Think about what Venn was discussing. It has nothing to do with that. It's all about changing the organization and putting in technology to make life easier for the customer. It has nothing to do with putting names in databases. You need names in databases, but that's not what it's about. But yet, you need a CRM system, and you do need those names and databases. It's what you do with them. Yeah, and I mean, it's, I think one of the points that, that Nan brought up is, you know, we have to, big data, right? We have to understand the customer better, right? And, and so you have to get the names in the database. You have to do the basic blocking and tackling. But at the end of the day, that's not what wins the business. You know, if we, if we look at, uh, you know, if we listen to Venn, it's not about the cement. 
It's not about the names in the database, it's about that customer experience. And the way that they can deliver that customer experience is by understanding their customer more deeply. They can segment their customer and they can serve that customer uh, by understanding who they are and what their needs are. And you know, whether that's being able to, to you know, run the credit card immediately, having the bills of lading handy, all the way through to, to providing digital experiences for them. Yeah, I thought Nan made a great point about big data, big data analytics, that they're more important to marketers now than ever but again, when it's focused from the customer end, that's the analytics you really need to get. Well, let's get to our second takeaway, which is, <clears throat> how do I sum this up? It's not the product, but it is the product. In other words, let's look at Venn, for example. It's cement we're talking about. <laughs> By the way, my dad's a stonemason, and I grew up in everything he was saying. Oh, as a small business who did about $2.5 million in revenue uh, out of stuff, if the cement wasn't there on time, we might have lost a week's pay. So I understood exactly what he was saying with that. But when it comes to customer engagement technologies, when it comes to who's implementing them and buying with them, in your, it's not about the product, but it is about the product. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Well, the, the product has to do what it says, right? I mean, I am sure that Semex is uh, always evaluating how to make better cement. Oh, but, I can tell you about bad cement. <laughs> oh yeah, I can tell you about it. I know when it was bad, so go ahead. Yeah. But, but, but Johan, this was not a conversation about cement. This was a, it was a consumer style conversation, but like Butch says, we're talking about cement. Yeah, I, and I think, that's, I think that's something really important for our audience to take away from this is that, you know, if, if you run a railroad, if you, you know, if, if you manufacture boxes, it does, it, you know, it's not about what the product is. I mean, let's face it, cement is something that we don't even think about if, uh, unless we're in the business, right? But Semex is leading, leading an effort to take this industry that's highly commoditized that people wouldn't even think about what is the, the experience. You know, it's kind of a, you know, you think of construction as something sort of rough and tumble and, you know, but experience matters. And, and the way, you know, I think the lesson, part of the lesson here is that, especially in highly commoditized industries, that customer experience is a way to differentiate yourself. It's a way to, to connect and, you know, it's easy to differentiate yourself with your most valuable clients because you give them the white glove treatment, you know, high touch, really personalized service. But how do you, how do you, you know, how do you go down that pyramid? How do you, how do you get to the clients at the, you know, the, the broad base of clients at the bottom who you don't have time or, or scale in your organization to touch personally? Well, you've skirted on going to this point a lot during this show. And we're talking about customer engagement technologies, customer experience. It's easy to, for us to think about it from a consumer standpoint, but how about from a B2B standpoint? I mean, that was Ven was going to, some of the greatest yeah. accomplishments he's had. Comment on that, both of you guys, because <laughs> customer experience from a B2B level is about a whole different thing, but the same fundamentals, isn't it? Yeah. You know, Nan spoke about the CIO, CMO disconnect. This is a B2B story. And uh, again, if we think about Semex, if they had a disconnect, they couldn't do what they're trying to do. Yeah, and and I, I you know, I'll I'll also say, you know, the thing that people get caught up in is the digital experience, right? This interaction with the consumer directly through a digital channel. Well, in a B two B setting, that that's not always the case. You know, yet yeah, absolutely there are you know, uh, in trouble ticket portals and all kinds of things. But the reality is that in a B two B setting, it's all about that individual connection. So you have a salesperson who's going to go out and shake hands and take you to lunch and talk about an opportunity to improve your business. That salesperson needs the right technologies to help them engage. So the well, technology is not the engagement. The person is engaging, Great but point. there's an enabling technology behind them. Great point. That's that salesperson on a B2B level may need something completely different. They may need training, they may need education, they may need education on the latest technologies themselves to do business with consumers that you can empower them to do, right? Exactly. And, Great. and, and I think the one other takeaway I want to bring up here is the, the organizational component. I think that as companies are looking at technologies, it's also critical to look at how, you know, what's the relationship in the organization. And you know, I, I said earlier that I think the CIO needs to own the technology and the business needs to, to be the decision maker. Uh, I, still, I still think that that's true, but you know, there's sort of an option, option C here, which is these new roles, right? The chief digital officer, the chief experience officer, combining IT and business people in a new way. 
so, you know, I think today it's the CIO, it's the CMO, but in the future, we may see a new organization emerge. All right, I told you guys I was going to put you on the spot at the end of the show, so let's put a ribbon around this show and see if there is a short answer. I don't know if there is to the ultimate question we asked here. When it comes to customer engagement technologies, who should be responsible for buying and implementing them? Is there, is there a short answer to that question, Michael? The short answer is it's both together. The, as I said before, if, you, if the CIO is not connected to the CMO, then it's like a bird with only one wing. It only can work when you have communication, collaboration across that divide. It must, you must bridge the divide. And you know, I, I agree. I agree with Michael. I, th I think that uh, at the end, you know, the relationship has to exist. The technologists have to get together with the business people and work together to deliver a solution. But I think the the, the thing that I'll, I'll I'll bring up here is I think there's new roles forming, and I think that today it's a CIO and CMO. But in the future, I think it might be somebody else. Well, and then there's that sticky question about whose budget it's coming out. Well, but that, yeah, you know. let's not talk about money. <laughs> well, things the things become very messy when it's now the CMO who owns a very significant portion of the organization's technology budget. Right. So where does the, in that case, where does the expertise it's lie? It's a great point. Uh, Johan Reed from SAP, Michael Kriegsman. Johan, for people that want to reach out to you, how do you prefer that they reach out to you? Uh, they can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Redefine, W-R-E-D-E-F-I-N-E. -E -E. uh, they can email me at johan.reed at sap.com. And Michael, before you answer that same question to yourself, a uh, quick plug for your weekly show, your live web show. It's called CXO Talks. It's something that uh, you've worked hard to build. You've done 36 episodes as of the, the live portion of this show. Talk a little bit more about it. CXO Talk is amazing because we bring together the really the most innovative CIOs, CMOs, CDOs, Chief Digital Officers, in the world. The conversation is highly substantive, but it's also casual. Nobody gets put on a pedestal. It's live, so we're all on the spot. And it's extraordinary. We've, we've had the CIO of the General Services Administration. We've had the CMO of SAP. We've had the CIO of Intel, the CIO of Dell. Uh, this week, we have Mary Fran Johnson, who is the editor-in-chief of CIO Magazine. Great. My co-host, Vala Afshar, and I do this. It's fun, and everybody should listen to you it. You don't do this, you live it. <laughs> we no, live it. You do. It's, it's, and again, people can go to cxo-talk.com. They can go to michaelkriegsman.com uh, on Twitter. And email, how do people get a hold of you? M. Kriegsman on Twitter. It's a great, great way to do it. Gentlemen, great conversation. It's an ongoing conversation. And again, for you, this show is a live monthly webisode, Customer Edge. But you can find the community at CustomerEdgeTV.com. Go there to find previous episodes of this show, to find the thought leaders like Johan, like Michael Kriegsman, to find the contributors to this show and to the content around giving your customers the edge, like Van Bontha from Semex, like Nan Nyack from Accenture Interactive. There you'll find the articles that are recommended by them. On the right side, you'll find the social channels. You'll also find a place to register for our next webisodes that are coming up on the customer edge. So. For uh, my co-hosts, Michael Kriegsman and Johan Reed, I'm Butch Stearns. Thank you for being a part of the Customer Edge.